Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Jeannie Maddox, and I am honored to serve as the governing chair for the Florida School Counselor Association, and I will be your moderator today. I'm going to ask everyone at this time to please turn off their microphones and their video recording. On behalf of the Florida School Counselor Association, we are proud to host this webinar, Ready, Set, Go the Social Distance. Everything you need to know about bringing your school counseling program into the virtual world of distance learning. Our presenters are excited to share and to give you some knowledge that they have been using daily in their programs. So before we get started and I introduce them to you, let's take care of a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, this session is being recorded and it will be on the Florida School Counselor Association YouTube channel available through the Florida School Counselor Association website. Please leave your microphones on mute so as not to create feedback, distract our presenters, or disturb other participants. Please turn the feed off on your camera by clicking the camera icon on the bottom left of your screen. If you're not familiar with Zoom, it's good to know you can drag your gallery of participants to the top or side of your screen to give you a full view of the presentation. If you go to the top of the gallery view and click on the individual icons there, you have a flat bar uh, square, uh, two rectangles, and something that looks like a Rubik's Cube. If you'll click on the second one, which is, looks like a square, it will give you a picture at the top of your screen of the person who's speaking. The content portion of our webinar will last about one hour, and we will take your questions at the conclusion. You're invited to post questions to the chat box throughout the presentation. And now to our introductions. Presenting today is Dr. Randy Scheitz, who has 25 years of experience as a school counselor in Palm Beach County. She is an adjunct professor at Nova Southeastern University in the school counseling program. She's a former Florida School Counselor Association School Counselor Advocate of the Year, and she also teaches English to students in China every day. Also presenting is Nicole Martinez, who's been a school counselor in Palm Beach County for 10 years. She is a former Palm Beach County School Counselor of the Year and finalist for Florida School Counselor of the Year in 2017. Nicole is proud to share her school has raised over $120,000 for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the past 10 years. This is in support of several of their students who've been diagnosed with leukemia. Dr. Melissa Garcia has 12 years experience as a school counselor in Palm Beach County. She is an adjunct professor at Florida Atlantic University in the counselor education program and a former FISCA school counselor of the year. Her biggest challenge with distance learning is not having her son say he has to go poopy during her virtual meetings. <laughs> Thanks each one of you for your willingness to share your experiences and expertise with us about distance learning. Um, Presenters, before you take the floor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have over 275 participants today. Please, if you've just entered, turn off your microphone and stop your video. Um, it will enhance the webinar for all of us. Please turn off your microphones. Thank you. Presenters, you now have the floor. Well, thank you all, 175 plus of you for taking your time in the middle of your work day to come here. Um, I'm willing to guess that you didn't come here because you just had nothing better to do and this seemed like better than nothing. You're probably here because you're looking for some great ideas and what you've realized, like all of us, is that your job has changed. Um, we're school counselors. You're probably awesome school counselors because you're taking um, a webinar um, to try and learn some ideas to make your program better. Um, what we're doing now, although it's, it's school counseling, it certainly looks a whole lot different. Um, what we've discovered, the three of us, is that we're able to do some pretty interesting and cool things with technology. And we're gonna be sharing some of those ideas of how we've been able to implement our school counseling programs virtually um, I'm also including some content from Janelle Leatherman, who's not here today, but she gave us a lot of content of some of the great things that she does at the middle school level. Um, another thing I would like to say is that um, some of the, the ideas that we're doing today, one of the biggest takeaways for me is that we've learned a whole lot of techno technological skills and 
I plan on using these skills um, next year and when we're back in the regular school. So hopefully some of the ideas that we talk about today will be things that you'll be able to implement next year as well. So the three of us are from Palm Beach County and in our county, we're using G Suite, all of the Google programs, but I know that is not a statewide um, platform. So some of you might not be using Google in your school districts. Most of the things that we'll be talking about today will be related to the things that we've been able to do using Google. However, even if your school district is not a Google school district, um, you can get G Suite, which is actually free now because of the pandemic. Um, some of you are using Zoom. So a lot of the ideas that we'll be sharing today, you'll be able to implement through meetings like we are on right now um, with Zoom. So some of the things that um, wait, did I skip a, yeah, no, I skipped one. Um, so some of the things that we're able to use our Google Classroom for um, is for check-in, check-out, um, posting, posting things for students like Google Forms, um, posting activities, we're going to show you how to do that. Um, interactive discussions, pre-recording lessons. So Google Classroom is basically a place where you can house things for your students to use. Um, another thing that we've been using is Google Meet. Um, and Google Meet, you can schedule live meetings. That's similar to Zoom, where you have your students come on and you're actually face-to-face. -face. And you can do different activities um, virtually and live with students using Google Meet. Um, you can also use it for classroom lesson delivery. Uh, you can also record yourself using um, Google Meet and share that out on your Google Classroom. So for recording and for live events, for parent conferences, collaborating with your colleagues, we're gonna be sharing um, all of that as well. So Google Classroom, um, it's a little difficult here because we're on a webinar and I can't see all your faces. If we were in a, a room full, I would say, hey, raise your hand if you're using Google Classroom. Um, so this is a little bit of a, del a different delivery also for us to give you the information. But um, Google Classroom is um, pretty amazingly interesting, um, not interesting, pretty amazingly simple to set up. You could actually set up a Google Classroom in five minutes while you're standing here listening to me talk about this. So if you're going through your Google, your Gmail account, you have the little waffle here on the side. Um, and uh, in there, you, you'll see Google Classroom is one of your choices. This is the Google Classroom icon. You're clicking the um, add button, create class. You can name it whatever you want. And that'll give you a classroom. And in that classroom, you'll be able to use all the functions that we'll be sharing. That's as, that's as simple um, how you're able to create your Google Classroom. Some of us you'll see have multiple Google Classrooms that they use for different purposes. Some of us, um, like myself, I kind of use one main Google Classroom for my school and I have different things that I do within that. Others have set up different for, um, Google Classrooms for different grades or different functions. This is actually what my dashboard looks like. Actually, this is part of my dashboard. I actually have many more. It, it goes all the way down. But you'll see this one here um, is my Google Classroom that I'm using right now for my school. I have some that other colleagues have shared with me because it's a good way to share content. This is Nicole's because I also have access to one of hers. This one is one that we use with our colleagues to share information. This one is for our school district. So you could do so much with Google Classroom. I plan to use it a lot more. Um, next year. Um, when, you when you start your Google Classroom, uh, you'll get a code. I have my code uh, covered up right now, but um, you'll, you'll give this little code to whoever and that's how they join your, um, your classroom. So if you start a Google Classroom, it's not like everybody in the school has instant access. They, act they have to actually manually join their Google Classroom. But then once they are part of your Google Classroom, um, you can, they're part of your um, roster of people and you can assign them things. And um, Melissa's going to be talking a lot about um, that today as well. 
You can. Hold on. Let me get back to that. You can see here that we decided to let the freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors to each have their own separate Google Classroom. You don't have to set them up this way. I do know some high schools that have one single school counseling Google Classroom for all their students. We think that by separating it, it may help to disseminate relevant information to the right audience. So for example, the freshmen may need to know something that is pertinent to only them that the seniors necessarily don't need to be aware of and vice versa. It is helpful to have them separated by grade level if you are disseminating materials or resources that are relevant to let's say upperclassmen. So for dual enrollment, we may not want to be posting certain things to the underclassmen like early admission, which is only available for senior students. So I think separating the Google Classrooms is useful and helpful in that way. And remember that you can make one single post and post it to various classrooms at once, which makes it super quick and efficient and practical, especially if you have your Google Classrooms separated by different levels of students or, or groups. Okay, so one of the tabs, you'll see this first tab um, that you have access to once you enter Google Classroom is the stream. So you can post anything on the stream. It's kind of like the Facebook newsfeed. You're just, um, typing messages, but you could also attach all your documents. So here's actually three different examples of my stream, Nicole's stream, and Janelle's stream at the middle school level. Um, so you can post announcements. Uh, you could post activities like today. Act today's activity is this. And here's the documents that go with it. Here's the YouTube link that goes with it or my recorded Google Meet recording. So um, and you can activate either that the students can comment on the stream or you can turn that function off so that it's only for you posting things. Also, when you post classwork, which we'll talk about, um, it will automatically show up in the screen. So if you post something new, uh, everyone who's part of your Google Classroom will see the new content as well. Okay. Oh, I have to do this every time. Okay, at the high school level, I definitely feel like we utilize the stream most often in our Google Classroom. And I think that's because it mirrors almost like a social media platform where students can log into their portal, click on the Google Classroom, and very quickly see all the important information that's been posted within the stream. Now, something to definitely think about is, do you want to allow students to have the option to comment on your individual streams or posts? And this is important to think about. There are high schools in my district that do allow students to comment, and then there are other high schools that don't. My particular high school, we feel like it's very important right now in this time of virtual education, virtual school counseling, to give students the opportunity to have a platform to interact with us and ask questions because we often find that they have very similar questions and we really want to be able to be accessible to interact with them sometimes it's very hard to get teenagers to open up and share and ask so we want to try to give them every opportunity possible for this now challenges involved with allowing students to comment of course, students can make inappropriate comments. I will say that this has not happened too, too many times. It, it, it has happened a few, um, maybe like three, 
So for example, when we posted all our mental health lessons that the district rolled out that the students have to complete, you know, a student commented WTF. The good thing is, is that you can quickly delete these comments. And when you set up your Google Classroom, you can set your notifications to when a student makes any kind of comment, whether it's private or public on that thread, you get either an email or a notification sent directly to your phone. So you can choose whatever preference you want. You would get the notification and delete any inappropriate comment. A few days ago, I did have a student at 2.30 in the morning make a whole slew of very inappropriate comments, just spamming it these long text messages, you know, they're teenagers. So uh, I, <laughs> we, I woke up the next morning and more than likely, you know, when you're in a high school, you have a department of, you know, however many counselors I have a total of six in mine. And between one of us, we're going to catch these notifications. So I wake up at seven in the morning. I'm like, ah, I'm reading through all of this. And, you know, in that case, we, delete the comments, we notify our administration, and at that point, you know, they kind of take over. You can also mute mm -hmm. the student, I'll go over this in a bit, where if you do not want them to be able to have access to the Google Classroom or post anything, you certainly do have that option. And then another really good feature about the Google Classroom is when you're posting in the stream, you can actually post to multiple Google Classrooms at the same time. So let's say you um, have your Google Classrooms split by grade level and you feel like whatever you're posting is relevant to all grade levels or maybe a couple of them, you can use that one post to, to post whatever you want to say all at once just with the click of one button. So I really think that's an awesome feature. Okay, so the next tab in Google Classroom, we just spoke about the stream. The next part is classwork. So classwork is basically where you're going to house all of your documents. Um, again, you're gonna hit create. Um, this is actually, it goes further down, but when you create topics, it creates these like folders. They're like the sections of each thing. So I have many sections. Um, I have, I do a, a recording every Friday. So my recordings are all in one place. I do jokes of the week and the kids are submitting jokes to me and I read the jokes on my Friday recording. Um, I have specific grade level activities. I can divide it up by grade level. Um, or I can have a section that's for my, our themes like Mindfulness Monday. I might have different activities that fall under um, a certain theme that we're doing, or um, you could also um, use it by date. Like uh, if you have different activities each week, so you can have week of April 27th and house it that way. So you can make your categories and topics however you want. You're also able to create questions, assignments, or if you post uh, create material, that's where you're able to to create, um, attach like YouTube links and, um, and things like that in uh, create material. And then also once you create something, you can then choose the topic. So if I create um, a YouTube link, um, I can say, you know, where I want to post it. So I want to post it under um, question of the day or mindfulness Monday. So you can choose the topic and it goes right there. And again, everything that you post in um, classwork will also show up in your stream. Here is a list of <laughs> Here is a list of topics that would be relevant at the high school level. And I think a lot of high schools will have very similar topics available within their Google Classroom. And I really appreciate being able to sort material by these topics because the stream is great to post announcements, but if you want teachers and parents and students to be able to reference important updates and material that you post, 
then it is really advisable to upload the material and sort it within their own individual topics so that people can efficiently get the information when they need it and it's very organized. I, I am like an organization queen and this made me really happy. I almost feel like Google Classroom is like it's, its own independent functioning website. The only problem, as my administrator explained to me, is that if someone doesn't have your Google Classroom code, they may not know that it exists. Because I said to my department, you know, what if we just kind of use this as a supplemental website for our department? Because a lot of students connect and engage with it. So I'm like, gosh, it's so hard to get students to connect to us on, let's say, Twitter or Instagram. You know, we, we have followers, but we don't have that many. And we don't care about being popular, but we just really want students to be able to get information so I was like, oh, this is great. So many students are connecting, but I do need to advise, like my administrator explained, if they don't have the code, they may not be able to know that it even exists or they're not getting the information. Okay, so now I'm introducing Janelle Leatherman. Uh, so many of you might um, know her because she's been around for a really long time. She's actually a ramp winner at the elementary level and at the middle school level, and she's re-ramping or uh, applying again this year. So she does obviously um, a, a lot of very innovative school counseling programs at her school, and she's doing very innovative things right now here on, in distance learning also. So this is how she uses classwork. Um, Janelle actually does have multiple Google Classrooms. She runs a, a class. She has her own Google Classroom for herself and her grade level that she's the counselor for. Um, and, uh, but she has other Google Classrooms for, for different topics. So she assigns the, um, the lessons in classwork. You can see here um, who's turned it in, graded. When you're assigning things on Google Classroom, you can posted just for, you know, here's a great activity that you could try, or you can um, uh, post it for a grade. So she actually teaches a teen leadership class, so that part is, is graded. Um, she does uh, also uh, recordings that go out to her school, like they do a, a Mon uh, Monday Matters, and Monday Matters is actually facilitated by the teachers. They use Google Classroom to share the content, they record the videos, the counselors record the videos and um, send it out via Google Classroom for the teachers to actually present in their class. So you can see here in Classwork, all of her different topics. If you click on any of these links, it will open up the lesson, the PowerPoint that she's recorded. There are different activities in each one. So it's a very organized way to uh, deliver <sighs> Classwork. And one more time. <laughs> In addition to posting information, you can also upload assignments for students to complete. So let me give a few examples of what this may look like in a high school setting. Before we left to enter into this virtual learning, we did not complete course selection with our current juniors who are going to be seniors next year. So what we ended up having to do was to create an electronic course selection sheet via Google Forms, send it out to the students via Google Classroom, and then gave them a deadline to complete their course selection sheet, which is where they choose their courses for their senior year. And this is something very important to the students. They get very anxious, excited, eager. There's all different types of emotions involved when it comes to the course selection sheet. So we were able to 
upload it and assign it. And it worked out beautifully. We put the deadline on there, which students can still submit late because a lot of times they procrastinate and either they submit things at the last minute or after the deadline, that's completely fine. You have all those options available, whether or not you want to allow students to submit late or edit their responses. And it, we were able to dump all of their responses into a spreadsheet and then our data processors are going to input all the courses for them. It was amazing. Another more simple option could be to assign them their senior graduation survey, you know, give them the link, tell them they have to complete it by the deadline, which is something that all seniors typically do at the end um, of the school year, right before they graduate. So just a couple quick examples. Sky's the limit on what you can do with this. Anything that you need from the students, you can just assign it to them. And you can see in the image that blue create button you just create and um, click on that and create your assignment. Very simple and great results. Um, so I spoke about um, Janelle Leatherman and how she does her morning meetings and use it. So one of the things she does is she records her PowerPoints, but unlike what you're hearing right now, like you're hearing a voice, with Screencastify, this is a program, which also, by the way, I think you can get free right now with a, some kind of promotional code, um, but it's a really awesome program because you can actually um, record a, a live video of yourself. So as you're delivering the PowerPoint, instead of them just looking at PowerPoint slides or teachers having to read a script or read the slides, you actually have personal delivery. So this is um, Janelle actually talking her way through the PowerPoint. You can move your video all around. And then uh, unlike our live events, which Nicole and I are gonna be speaking today about some of the fun live events that we do, uh, it's difficult to do a lot of live events in middle school and high school. So the way to get, to get more personal delivery to more students is by using programs like this um, and still being able to reach with your own personal delivery style um, rather than just PowerPoints. So that's something you might want to check out as well. This is a chart of all. Uh, do that again. <laughs> this is a chart of all the different Google Chrome extensions that are available to download. I had no clue how many of them there were. A couple of my favorites are the Bitmoji and Google Meet Grid View. Once you click on the link at the bottom of this screen, all you have to do is click on the icon of the one you would like to download or get more information about. Okay, now a lot of counselors are using this. Nicole's gonna speak about how she uses that, but using Google Form, you can do several things. One, you can house Google Forms in your Google Classroom where people can, um, the students can go on and fill out forms. So you could use that for registration or um, questions that you're asking, daily check-ins, um, and, um, or to request a, a meeting. So some people use it as a, how are you today? And that's a good way to kind of um, identify students that are needing some support, um, or that it's, it's a good way for students to just reach out and, and request an appointment. Um, so that's, that's one way of using Google Forms, and Nicole's gonna tell you about how she uses that. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, so this was actually one of the very first things that I um, did is I created a Google form and I um, cannot take credit for this. I um, borrowed this from uh, Lori Landis, who's also another counselor in our district. And it is a, um, if you don't know anything about Google Forms, uh, the, one of the best things it does is it provides you with data. And you guys know as school counselors, we are, you know, data driven. So um, 
what I did was I posted the form on all of my classrooms, and I'm going to talk about my classrooms in a second. Um, and this was kind of just serving as a virtual check-in. So uh, the questions consisted of how are you feeling today? Um, if you have a problem, what mindfulness strategy can you try? I wanted them to try to reflect on um, some of the things that I had taught them during the year. And some of the mindfulness strategies they could choose were um, color or draw or take some deep breaths, um, play with a pet, go outside, use positive self-talk. Um, then again, to focus more on the positive, I said, you know, tell me something you enjoy doing. There was a part in this Google form to leave me a note. And then at the end, I asked them if they would like an email um, from me. And probably, I'd say I had about 120 kids fill out the form. A good 20% of them said they wanted an email. Um, so I emailed them and in my email, I asked them if they wanted to arrange a Google Meets call. And this was, um, this really served as a great avenue uh, for me to develop my kids that I needed to check in with on a weekly basis. And we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes, but you can see from, from the data, it just kind of shows some demographics as far as which grades filled out the form. And then um, the majority of our kids, thankfully, are, are doing pretty well. That red area was kind of that the kids that are feeling stressed or worried, and they, the, that's representing the group that wanted the check-in. When you click on the people, When you click on the people link, you will find a list of all the members of your Google Classroom. So ours are sorted by teacher and students, and you can select individual members, or you can select everyone in your Google Classroom, and you can email them all at once, which I think is a really good function. Yet another awesome one, right? Also, this is where you would be able to select students if you wanted to remove them from your classroom. But let's say you don't necessarily want to remove them. You still want them to be able to get all the materials and information that you post. You can always mute them, which means they're still part of your Google Classroom, but they don't have the ability to make comments on your post. So back to the inappropriate commenting, if you had a student do that, you could always mute them and it's here under the people link. Something else I want to make sure to mention is if you look on the slide, you'll see that you can click on invite guardian and you just input the parent or guardian's email address and you can directly invite them to also participate in the Google Classroom, which I think is extraordinary. So the more parent involvement, especially when parents are that key, key person in the student's life to help them support them at home. Now everyone's at home. So the more we get parents on board, it just helps everyone takes a village. I know I don't have to tell you this. You all know that. Okay. So one of the things that I, I spoke about is uh, one of the things that you can do in Google meet is actually do a recording. So when you're in Google Meet, you have a live meeting, you can choose to record it. So I use it to record a weekly video. I, my, uh, I call it Funny Friday. And one of the things that I have in my Google, uh, the, the, in the classwork section is joke of the week. And all week long, students are writing in jokes, sending me jokes. And during that Funny Friday video, I read their jokes. I also give them shout outs. Um, so, I hold up this little shout out while I'm doing the um, the recording. So the shout outs could be for things that they did during the week. So if they did one of my activities, um, I might print it out or show it on a, a device and say, you know, this is so and so. This is what makes her happy. Um, so I might share their their work in the shout out. I might share their birthday for some of the students that come to my. Um, my live events if they're having a birthday we have a little birthday celebration i'll give them a birthday shout out um it, 
we play different games throughout the week, which, which we'll be talking about in a second. Um, and I'll, there'll, there'll be a winner of the game. Um, one of the things that I use this for though also is for teaching games. So some of the games that we play, you know, if you showed up to my event, we played games, it was really fun. But of course, most of the school is not showing up to these live events. So I talk about the games and I teach them these games because these are all games that they could use or that they, that they could play, even if you know, they don't have to go out and buy things. There are things that you can do with what you have around the house. So I'll, if I introduce a new game in, in my happy hours, um, I'll, I'll teach that game in my Funny Friday video and I encourage them to play that at home with their family. Oh, and, and when you record it, by the way, um, it shows up right in your Google Drive. So it's really easy. You press record, it shows up magically in your Google Drive, and then you have a shareable link that you can post or share with others. Okay, so this is um, a picture of my um, Google Classrooms. Um, Randy and I did things a little bit differently, and I know everybody's doing their own kind of thing. So I, um, I actually decided to have a Google Classroom for each grade level. And as you can see from the numbers, we actually are a very big elementary school. We have almost 1,100 kids, including pre-K. Um, and I have a good 100 kids in each um, grade level. You see the number there for kindergarten is uh, low, and I'm going to talk about kindergarten engagement in a few minutes. But um, similar to what Randy is doing, I also have a daily thing where uh, excuse me, a daily theme. So Mondays is uh, mindfulness. Tuesdays is when I schedule my grade level meetups. So I actually have um, six meetups with each grade level on Tuesdays. Wednesday is we focus on wellness. And what I've chosen to do is take um, each part of the wellness wheel and do a different focus each week. So first I did social, then I did physical wellness. This week happens to be intellectual wellness. Um, Thursday is Happy Thoughts Thursday, where I just try to post some sort of a positive reflection for them. And Friday is uh, feelings and fun. So I post something fun for them to do, and I also reflect on a feeling in some um, strategies they can use for those feelings. Um, one of the really great things about Google Classroom is you can actually set your post to share amongst all your classrooms. And a lot of you all who do lesson plans for elementary, I'm sure you do, you know, something similar for K-1, you do something similar for 2-3, and then you do something similar for 4-5. Um, what I really try to accomplish is to do the same post um, for every grade level, which means I just type it out once and then it posts for all six grade levels. Um, but depending upon what I'm focusing on that week, um, I might just post that for K or one or two or three. So we don't have to copy and paste. We just choose which classroom we wanna post it in and then it shares automatically into that classroom. So uh, I also do themes just like Nicole does, uh, where I'm posting different things for the different themes. But um, I have daily live events. So every day at one o'clock, I have live events. Kind of it's the way my school is functioning. Like they have their academics from nine to 11. And then one o'clock is their fine arts time if they want to attend live events. So I do my live events every day at that time. Um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, I have happy hour, and happy hour is open to anybody in the school, although honestly, I mostly get third, fourth, and fifth graders, um, I, and I tend to get the same students every day because they really like it. So it's been kind of a nice little group, and we play all kinds of games, which I'll talk about. Um, then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have planned events, and they're for different grade levels. So um, on Tuesdays, it's called Talk to Me Tuesday, and that's only for grades three to five, kind of, it would be similar to like a lesson that I would plan um, if I was doing an SEL classroom lesson. Um, on Thursdays, I do the same thing for K to K2, and that's Happy Thoughts Thursday. Um, again, planned activities. And then on Friday, you know, one of the things that is, I think, really missing from the, um, students is that they really miss each other. They miss the social connection. That's one of the reasons why I think they show up to especially my happy hours. We play games. Um, and so on Friday, it's more social activities, but I divide them up by grade level. So 
on, um, I'll have a lunch and laugh with fifth grade and the fifth graders come by and eat lunch with me and we play different games, but only fifth graders are allowed. And then K to four, I have different grade level. Um, I call them play dates, but they can see their peers. So they're not open to the whole school, they're grade level specific. So some of the games that we have been playing, um, some of them we went out and bought. Um, uh, Nicole and I are kind of doing similar things. So we'll have, um, one of them is called What's in the Box? So that was a game that I actually kind of made up. But um, I have a, a box that I use and um, I'll put an item inside the box and they have to ask me questions like, um, they have to be yes, no questions. So like, can I eat it? Um, is it an animal? Does it have two legs? Does it have feathers? Um, does it have wheels? And then they, they guess on what, what's in the box. So that was kind of how I started the games, but then our games evolved. So I've done scavenger hunt. So you give them a question like, um, find something round, and then they'll go look through their house, bring back something round. Um, find something with something that smells nice, and they go and do that. Um, since then, I've kind of gotten some new games. Some of these I, I actually bought. So five second rule, you basically have five seconds, and you, um, trying to look at my camera. Um, so it'll say something like, Name three superpowers, and you had five seconds to answer the, the name three superpowers. Name three itchy things. So that's, that's a fun one. And another fun one that I've done is the apples to apples. So in the real game of apples to apples, you have green cards and red cards. The green cards have adjectives on them, and the red cards are just like random words. So in the real game, you know, you say a word, and they have to find cards um, that, that match it and often don't match it, which is what makes the game funny. Um, but since we're playing this virtually, I just hold up the green card. So I might say something like fake. Fake also means unreal, counterfeit, deceptive. And they have to find something that would be a good thing for fake. Now, the way I play the game is they have to come before we start the game. They actually go and find all the items that they want to play with. So during the game, they can't get up and like run through their house. They can get things from like things that they could grab, um, but they play with those items. It's, it's actually really um, fun. Uh, Nicole and I also bought something called Chat Pack, which is really amazing. Um, Chat Pack has really fun questions. I use these a lot during my lunches. Some questions like, um, if you could see anything at all in super, super, super slow motion, what would you want to see? Um, what is one event you've, uh, you've seen only on television, but you'd love to actually be part of one day? So questions like that. And then the other one is the table topics. And table topics have questions like, if you can invite one person to have dinner with your family, who would you choose? So these are good to have. So I, I make up games or I play games um, like this. And um, Nicole, you could tell us a, a little bit about books. Okay, so um, I don't know if anybody's had any experience with books before, but um, the one of the greatest things about books is it's free now for 30 days. Um, and then I think after that, it's only like $4.99 a month or so. But um, a lot of our books that we use for social emotional learning are on books. And it is just a very interactive, um, digital, digitally impressive way to read a book. Um, the one that's pictured in the, um, on the screen right now is Giraffes Can't Dance. And I'm sure we've all used that book at the elementary school level about um, a giraffe overcoming his, his challenge. But, um, you know, <clears throat> a lot of the authors now are allowing us to stream their books and videos and whatnot. But I, I just found that books is um, incredibly engaging for the kids. So I've been using it a lot in, in my daily themes. So um, this is an example of my um, Talk to Me Tuesdays, and I just have a couple pictures on here, and our assistant principal is, is on one of our calls. I always invite our assistant principal and our principal to pop in because they really love to see the kids as well. So um, 
this is on Tuesdays, I actually have live Google Meets for every grade level. And what I do is I post the link uh, on each grade level screen uh, the day of the meet. And I kind of go over a format of expectations with them. I talk to them about Google Meet etiquette, making sure that you're in a quiet location, making sure there's no background noise. Um, you know, a lot of talks that the kids are doing with their teachers, they have to keep their microphones muted all the time. And I know kids are really um, sensing frustration and not being able to, like Randy said, interact and talk with their classmates. So when the groups are small, I really allow them freedom of expression. Um, and they love it. I mean, they love to be able to talk to each other and just engage in games. Um, so we go over expectations. We do kind of like a little social emotional check-in. Um, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, Sometimes I theme the day where you see it says crazy hat day. So on that day, I just said, you know, wear a hat to our meet. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about kindergarten engagements because on a couple of slides back, you noticed that my numbers in kindergarten on my um, Google Classroom were very low. So it is very difficult, as you guys know, who are in elementaries right now to engage kindergartners because the majority of their online learning has to be parent assisted. So when I first started doing these meets, I did offer it to kindergarten and I had a very poor um, turnout. And that was okay because I realized everything has to be assisted by the parents. So what I did was I actually emailed the kindergarten team and I asked them to send me um, invites to all of their meets that they have with their students, whether it's a fun Friday or a fun lunch day, and this way I just pop in on their meetings um, and their time with the kids. And just sometimes I ask funny questions. You know, we talked about careers this week. So I asked um, the kids, what do you want to be when they grow when you grow up? And they shared that. So, you know, that was a really fun way for me to, to reach out to kindergartners without another expectation of another Google Meets within the day. Okay, and one of um my my live events i mean my my classwork that i do that's not a live event um i often post activities like this to go along with our themes we also do school-wide themes where we have different um dress up days today actually this is our this week i'm supposed to be in a costume so i might have to change later um yesterday we brought our pet to school um so we have we have daily themes that's a, a school-wide initiative that we do we also had um, everybody in our school was given a an owl to color in and we hang it on our mailbox um, that actually was featured on our local news here with so we have owls all over our town that's my owl and I've actually added the owl in my classroom because um, so that's part of our kind of school culture um, so one of the activities that I did during my um, talk to me Tuesday is we talked about worry that was one of our topics. We've done Circle of Control. I've read the story, um, Will Magine the Worry Machine by Julia Cook. And in that book, they have a, a worry hat. You put all your worries in the worry hat. So we also had a crazy hat day. I did the worry hat activity during um, our crazy hat day. I have um, worry eaters. I actually use these in my class, in my office, in, the, in my real school. Uh, they have little zipper mouths and you put your worries inside the worry eaters. But one of the activities that we do is we create our own worry eaters using these envelopes. So this could be something that I would post um, in my classwork and have them do it on their own and then share it with me or take pictures of themselves having it uh, or share it in my live events. Or I could actually do it as a live event, which I'm actually going to do this Thursday with the younger students and we'll make worry eaters, but they'll have to come to class with either a, um, an envelope or a piece of paper that they can fold and make it. Okay, so um, we've been talking about engagement and how to engage students. So this is kind of one of the things that we have been doing um, as a school-wide event. So one of the first that we did was we um, we created a video and we had teachers kind of just make a um, make a picture or a message that they wanted to send to the students and we I put together a video through um, iMovie so 
that was so well received with the parents and the kids that we decided to do a weekly theme where um, like this, this week's theme is mix and clash week. Send a picture of yourselves and your family wearing mixed mask clothes. So during the week, the um, parents would send me a picture. And then on Friday, I put the movie together and uh, upload it to YouTube and I share the link. And um, I took some snippets from our YouTube videos. You can see that they've been viewed, you know, quite a few times. The kids are really, really enjoying them. Um, I've seen a lot of pets and, uh, it's, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and I've been getting some really great positive message from the parents. You know, my daughter looks forward to seeing this every Friday. Thank you so much. Um, one of the other things I'm doing that is super easy to engage with students is to just send those um, students who are celebrating a birthday each day an email and I email the student and I copy their parents on it. Um, just wishing them a happy birthday. I do a little emoji of myself with hugs. Um, and you know, they're very, very appreciative of that because you know, realize this is also a time where kids are usually, you know, celebrating in their classroom with cupcakes and cake with their friends. And you know, that's another thing that they're unfortunately missing out on. Um, so just as Randy spoke a little bit uh, ago about engagement in individual students and circle of control, that's also one of the other things that I like to use with students because um, they are really struggling with, especially my fifth graders are really struggling with all the end of the year things that they missed out on, their end of the year trip, uh, going to DC as patrols, their graduation. Um, so they're very, you know, they're really struggling with this lost uh, in their lives. So, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things I like to do with the students that I see individually, and the way I create this group of students was either the kids that I was seeing individually when we left and came home, or some of the students that um, reached out to me through the Google form who really needed some more individualized attention. So, my drawing is horrible, but this was one of the circle of controls that I did with a student. And I really, you know, asked them to focus on what are the things inside the circle that you can control? You know, we can't control, we can't control the coronavirus. We can't control graduation. We can't control, and this one said canceled, uh, her play was canceled. So, you know, what are the things that she can focus on? That positive mindset, that um, communicating her feelings, um, having some activities to do when she's bored. Um, so what I usually do with the individual sessions that I have is I put on the slide some of my talking points, reassuring them that they're safe, letting them talk about the things that worry them, helping them tend to uh, try to focus on the things that are positive. Um, I like to share my own coping skills with them because that even gives them some ideas. And then to help them, of course, along with their parents, you know, create a routine and structure because unfortunately that's missing from a lot of their lives right now. Another really fun thing that I've been doing with kids and they absolutely love it is step-by-step um, -step drawings through YouTube where I draw the, um, the image and they draw it and then we can kind of compare at the end. So the top one, I did a little Minecraft figure with a student, the bottom one, I did a, a unicorn and they, they really love to show, uh, show and tell, so to speak. And I'm gonna talk in a few minutes a little bit more about that. And, and you know, the interesting thing is uh, a lot of the things that Nicole and I are sharing, although we're using Google Meet, which is high tech, we're doing it in a pretty low tech way. You know, we're drawing a piece of paper, holding it up. Um, but there are other um, counselors, like you can find a lot of things on, uh, you know, Teachers Pay Teacher right now for like digital um, activities where you could share your screen and actually do an activity live with the student while you're filling out a form or doing things that way. So that's just another way to do that. Um, these are some of the live events that um, that I do. Uh, this was actually during one of my Talk to Me Tuesdays, and we read uh, sections of Kid President's book, and one of his pages was Put Tape on Your Nose, which my students really enjoyed. And so they all ran and got tape, and we taped our noses. Um, this is Janelle Leatherman's uh, morning meeting that she has with her class. This was her asking her students, how was your week? You know, rate your week on a scale of one to five they held up their hand. So uh, this is kind of a nice interactive way. This is at the middle school level. Um, and this is kind of like what our happy hours look like. We're doing different games and activities. Um, and Nicole, you did this activity. You, you could share about that. Sure. So um, 
one thing I've learned is the kids really want to show and tell. You know, they want to um, do your activities, but they want to show them to you and talk to them about you. So one of the things I did last Monday for Mindfulness Monday, as you can see in the top right corner, is I had them create calm down jars or mindfulness jars. And I actually recorded a Google Meets video with my daughter, uh, my college daughter and I making the mindfulness jar together. And I shared my video along with the instructions to the students and they, they enjoyed making them, they wanted to show them to me. And what I like to do is kind of cluster those um, pictures that are being sent to me and then I put them back on the stream in my Google Classroom so they can, they can see their work and be proud. A typical no didn't help. <laughs> trying a new approach didn't work a typical day supporting students is very different than it was just a few weeks ago for me it's a process that keeps evolving in the beginning I was mostly using email communication then as more information and resources became available I started having virtual meetings with students and parents via Google meets I immediately loved it. I find virtual meetings to be so much more effective than going back and forth in email. I really enjoy seeing my students' faces. Sometimes their families will pop on and say hello, and that's always nice. It has been a very pleasant experience so far, I must say. Interestingly, the virtual meetings seem to be shorter than in-person meetings, and no one is typically late to them. I also realized that some people prefer to communicate via text messaging, and that is the strategy I had to use when reaching out to students that were disengaged. I did this by using my Google number and sending a simple text that said, your teacher told me you haven't been completing your work. How can I help you get back on track? It helped to get students and some parents to open up and respond. If you have a Google Classroom, then it needs to be monitored every day. The notifications really help with this since they alert you when a student makes a comment or post on there. Each counselor at my school has a designated day to monitor our Google Classrooms and students are able to see to receive a very fast response to any of their inquiries during this time. Of course, providing key updates and valuable resources, whether it's through a website, Google Classroom, social media, or any other platform you may be using is important since many things are changing on a daily basis. If I feel a student may need any level of therapeutic support, I refer him or her to one of our mental health counselors on staff. Their contact information is located on our Google Classroom, but we can make referrals to them as well. A positive that I have taken a positive that I have taken from working virtually is the ability to come up with innovative ways to increase student engagement. This Friday, I will be rolling out my new Talk It Out sessions, where I will be set up in a Google Meet for an hour. Students and parents can join any time during that hour to ask questions or simply chat with the school counselor. Since there may be more than one student or family in the chat with me at any given time, I will not disclose any personal or private information. For example, if a student wants to know a test score or their GPA, I would email that information to them rather than disclose it in the Google Meet. I will also have my screen shared and open to a document explaining the limits of confidentiality in the room. I am excited to see how it goes. It is, really a, a, it is really amazing to see what a virtual faculty meeting actually looks like <laughs> at my school. I will never forget this image. I mean, how could I? There are, it, there are additional types of support that are really effective at the high school level. My principal created a faculty Google Classroom where we were all able to share resources and feedback with one another. We still continue to use it to this day. I have weekly virtual meetings with my school counseling team and that really helps us to work together while apart.
I try to make sure parents are aware of their child's academic progress or lack thereof and encourage them to join our Google Classrooms as well. More often than not, I am finding that parents are completely unaware that their child has not been submitting any of their classwork or homework. Sometimes I provide coaching to teachers to help them be flexible, encouraging, and supportive to students that are struggling with learning virtually. We all need to be reminded from time to time that everyone copes differently and we have no idea what families may be struggling with right now. Okay, and like um, Melissa just talked about how her school has a faculty Google Classroom, uh, we've been using this a lot in Palm Beach County to collaborate with our colleagues and not just for our own um, uh, classroom and students. So we have team meetings and faculty meetings and things like that on Google Meet. Um, but we also have shared Google Classrooms. We have one that is for all of the elementary counselors in our school district, and that's a great place where we've been able to share resources with each other. Um, we set up one just for our area. So in our district, um, our elementary school counselors have uh, professional learning communities. During the school year, you know, we plan all of these different events after school and we collaborate with each other. So each region in our school district has uh, their own school counselor PLC. Those are pretty complicated to schedule because they rely on everybody's after school activity. So it's pretty hit or miss who shows up at these meetings. We have taken that to Google Classroom, which has been amazing. And I think we'll definitely continue that next year. Um, I thought initially when I planned my first one, oh, hey, you guys want to you know, meet again in another month? And they all said, no, let's do this every single week. So we've been meeting every Thursday and people come on, we share ideas, we talk about the problems we've been having and we're getting all these great ideas from each other. One of the things that we're doing on Friday, we're having a busy week, Nicole, um, is mm -hmm. we have planned an event for our parents. Um, we're actually in the same town with different schools. Um, so we've created, uh, a, we call it coffee break with the counselors. And this, this is our topic for the week, but it's open to parents at three of the different schools. And we're gonna be doing it as a Google Meet. Um, we're probably gonna plan another one. I actually have somebody who wants to be a guest speaker. So we might plan a second one and have it as a guest speaker. So another thing we used to do in our town is we had collaborations but we would offer professional development well not really professional development but workshops for families um, and we would collaborate on offering those events but now we're doing that virtually which I think is really interesting and we've gotten a really good response remember we still remember we still have the ability to consult with our colleagues as needed and the need for this is probably more than ever I truly don't know what I would do without the school counselors that I work with. Oh, and a little disclaimer about using a headset. People can still hear your kids saying crazy things in the background like, Mommy, I need to go poopy or pee pee. But it does help to minimize distractions. Be flexible and more flexible. There are a lot of things that you were accustomed to that just aren't possible anymore. Remind yourself of this every day. I strongly believe in the value of you time, especially if you are also taking care of a family at home. I make sure to schedule some solo exercise time for yoga or a bike ride or crafting time to make a new project. I am absolutely addicted to my new Cricut machine. Last but not least, alternate your working hours if needed. Working at home with kids is not easy. Some days I get the majority of my work done after the kids go to sleep. Find whatever works best for you. So um, thank you all for making it to the very last slide of our presentation. We really appreciate 
you all hanging in there. Um, so this is just something kind of cute and, and a little bit more on the serious side that we wanted to end with. Um, those of you at the elementary level who have been on Zoom or Google Meets calls with the little ones, I'm sure have seen a lot of interesting things in the last week. I know I think I've met all my students' pets and taking tours of their house, um, lots of off-topic questions, um, a couple nose pickers, couple, you know, zoom in. Um, so, you know, that's been kind of funny um, to, to watch them in their own environment. Um, but, you know, the real heroes I think we need to look at here are the kids. Um, their, you know, world just like ours is different and has been turned upside down. Um, you know, they all they have different rules. Their parents are their teachers in some aspects. Uh, a lot of the things that they love and enjoy, like sports and being with friends and going to school, um, that consistency and routine has been taken away. So, you know, I think as school counselors, you know, we need to continue to to do what we always do, um, whether we do it in person or we do it now virtually, is continue to bring as much love and joy and support um, and consistency into um, our little heroes' lives. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> so there thank we are. you very much, and this is our Q&A, and I'll turn this over to Jeannie now. Okay, well, a couple of questions that have come in uh, throughout the presentation. And ladies, thank you so much. You did a beautiful job. I know that people are getting excited about the material that you've presented and really motivated by some of your ideas. Uh, one question we had was, um, the person doesn't have a camera on their computer. Can they use an iPhone to do these same things? So would it be the, the, the student they're saying? They do not, the counselor does not have a camera on their computer. Okay. I can only speak for Android and there is an app for everything. Google Classroom, Google yes. Meet, Google everything. I don't know about the iPhone though. Same for the iPhone. Okay. Yeah. No, so you, could, you could enter a Google Meet meeting and a Zoom meeting on your phone. So yeah, you, you could do it that way. You just wouldn't have all the same functions. Okay. Um, someone asked, how do students send pictures to the Google Classroom? Do, um, how do they do that? Well, what I usually do is, you know, they've gotten actually, you know, we've gotten tech savvy, but so have they. So a lot of the older kids have figured out how to post it back onto the stream. But what I usually do when I say, you know, make your mindfulness bottle and, and send me a picture is all on my stream is I'll put my email. So a lot of the times they just attach it to an email and most students can do that and you know, parents as well. But the other option is in classwork. So if you have it as an assignment, they could just attach it to the, your place in classwork. Okay, um, someone wanted a copy of your owl, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That actually was our PTA. Um, it's a coloring, um, it's just a coloring sheet, and we all colored it in different ways. So I have one in my mailbox outside, and then I, I colored a separate one that I keep in my office. <laughs> Randy has the best tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody must also have an owl as a mascot. <laughs> oh, yeah, more owls. I, yeah. Randy, um, someone asked about the games working with high school students. What do you think? Melissa, Randy, these games that she was talking about, would these be things that would work with high school students? So through all of these discussions with planning this webinar, I would tell Randy and Nicole, man, I wish I could do this with my high school students. Like, let's ask a joke of the day. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> what would they say? So I think for the high school level, the way to do this would be to have students submit via a, a Google form, like a joke of the day or um, anything you want, like sh share something fun you did today. And then that way counselors can monitor the responses and post the appropriate ones. I, I will say though, that's two different topics. So yeah, submitting things like a joke. Yeah, that's a little bit risky in high school and I'll, <laughs> defer to Melissa for that expertise. But some of the games that we play, like I might have like a little kid version of this second, this five second rule, but there's like an older kid version of this too. 
So a lot of these games, like if you host a game night or game afternoon, however you want to call it, um, there's no reason why you can't do this with teenagers. The chat packs are awesome too. Yeah. And the <laughs> chat packs come in like 10 other different categories. And guys, we got everything, of course, on Amazon. So um, you know, right. these, these can easily be used for high school and middle. Yeah, for sure. And it's right. actually, they come if they want to play games. It's fun. Okay. Um, and then the books, uh, I think people misunderstood. They thought you were saying books with a B, but books with a V, is it only available for elementary school or is it available for middle school as well? Um, when I went on, I only saw elementary school level books. Okay. On the, uh, Melissa, on the Google course selection, can students submit only once or can they submit again if they change their minds about their courses? Yeah, I answered that actually. You have either option to do, to do it either way. So it's totally up to the counselor if they wanna allow students to be able to edit their responses or only submit once. Okay. Um, Someone was asking about the check-in form. Did you send it to a select number of students or was it posted in your Google Classroom? I posted it in every one of my Google Classroom. So it went to 600 kids. All right, we have a lot of people still asking about the PowerPoint. Yes, this is going to be available um, in a PDF form and it will be attached to the recording which will be on the Florida School Counselor Association website. So that will be available once this meeting has concluded and it has rendered. Uh, which program do you use to create videos from pictures submitted by students? Um, uh, so I, I actually, I don't create a video, I create a collage and the collage I use is actually on my iPhone. I use two different ones, one's called PhotoFi, photo and FY at the end. And the other one I use is photo grid. Um, and you can use either one of those. They're both free and they make really good collages. So it depends on the activity. You know, if I get 10, 15, then I'll put it into a collage. If I just get less than five, then I'll kind of show, you know, I'll post each one of them. But Nicole, when you do the school wide events, you've turned those into videos. Oh yes. Uh, iMovie. Yes, I use iMovie from my Mac. And actually iMovie, if you have an iPhone, you can do it right from your phone. You don't even need an iMac. Okay. Um, I'm looking here to see if we have any other questions. Lots of thank yous, uh, amazing presentation, great information, feeling motivated, feeling behind but motivated. Um, Thanks Jean, for including Jean, ideas. Can I make a I comment? Yes. I just want to speak to the feeling unmotivated. I Listen, we are all getting through this together. And the first few weeks, I was just like survival. And the more you watch these webinars and the more you collaborate with people, you just get inspired. And it's totally okay if you're feeling right now, wow, I have a lot to do. Take it day by day. I think a lot of us are feeling this way. I mean, especially at the high school level, to, to listen to Randy and Nicole and their billion things that they're doing. And I'm like, oh man, I gotta step it up. You know, we're, we're all, doing this and getting through it so it's a it's okay to feel that way and i just really hope that today's webinar will motivate you to at least do one new thing uh, collaboration is the key for sure i mean I, I get a lot of ideas from randy we feed off of other counselors in our district we get some ideas from our um the person in charge of the elementary school counselors for palm beach county collaborate that's the that is the best way to do it and it's makes it so much easier Okay, um, and speaking to that same thing, asking how do you find the time to be so, so creative to do the things you featured in this webinar? <laughs> well, let's see. I don't know, this is just how we, we function. Well, we have lots of time on our hands. We're sitting at home, what else is gonna do? You think of great ideas. And, and you know, when you collaborate, you know, it's very quick, like I, I could, you know, I have an idea like, oh, I have a meeting at one o'clock. I, I send a text to Nicole and oh, there it is. Like 
you know, once you start doing these events and, and the, the students will start requesting things like, you know, that use what's out there, use our ideas, use your colleagues ideas, join all of these Facebook groups that they have for school counselors, because so many people are sharing really awesome ideas. And that's really the way to do it. There was a question was, uh, how do you uh, deal with confidentiality with sharing videos and pictures of students? Um, most of, so the, the, you mean through YouTube is what you're saying? Uh, it just says, what about confidentiality with sharing videos and pictures of students? Okay, well, I mean, all of our videos, we, we tell them that it's going to be on a YouTube video and being sent out to our school. Um, so, you know, we, we assume they know that it will be shared. Um, but, you know, a lot of the times what we do is we set the permissions to just share it, um, you know, with our, our email database. Um, so you can set the privacy settings on YouTube to, um, what am I trying to say, to, to you know, not share it to the whole entire world. I actually share it also under my own personal um, page on YouTube that's kind of set up for the school. So you're saying parents have to have a link, so not anybody can just go to Correct. your page. Correct. And yes. I know we share a lot of things on Twitter in our school district, and if we're sharing like screenshots of, of activities that we did with students, I always black out the name on the Google Meet grid also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, someone asked, did you do the, your presentation in PowerPoint or Google Slides? <laughs> Slides. We originally were going to do it in PowerPoint because the, the graphics in PowerPoint are a little bit better. But um, since we were all accessing um, the Google Slide presentation, a lot of the times, all at the same time, we decided that Slides was a lot more uh, appropriate for this avenue. It's very friendly for your collaboration among the three of you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, Steven says his favorite version of the box game for high schoolers is called Conundrums. Hmm. Anybody heard of Conundrums? No. No. Okay. Um, will you share your email addresses? Uh, the person that asked that, the email addresses are at the beginning of the presentation. And Randy, Nicole, and Melissa are happy to have you email them, they told me. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's see. There they are right there. Uh, we have uh, someone saying, thank you for saying, if we do just one new thing, we are good, that they needed perspective. Exactly. Uh, they were asking about a link to the PDF in the chat. Uh, that won't be available until later, but you can go to the FISCA YouTube page uh, tomorrow or the next day, and the video will be there of today's meeting as well as a copy of the PDF. And yes, the recording is on the Florida School Counselor Association webpage. You go to the, go there, then go to uh, professional development and then webinar replays and you'll find it there. Uh, one person says they're concerned about confidentiality, confidentiality and disclosure of intense issues. How do you respond to that? In, in which kind of a format setting? I guess that they're just referring to in a virtual setting. I mean, I think confidentiality issues are the same whether we're in school or whether we're in a virtual environment. I mean, we still are mandated reporters. Um, you know, we still are bound to the same confidentiality issues as we are if we are in a school setting. So, um, you know, I, I don't think that really differentiates at all. I think maybe they're talking about students having the freedom to say what they need to say when they're in a place where they may not have privacy or others could be walking by or listening. Yeah, I think most of the, the, the live events that we were talking about are really more social in nature and not maybe as counseling focused like, like they would be if we were in our office at school and certainly not because their, you know, their families are all around them that that, that is an issue. So for 
for a lot of the live events that we're doing, especially if it's more than one person, it might not be a a, um, a one on one session. That might be a little different, but um, more for social connections. Okay. Um, someone asked, is there a specific form we are using for confidentiality? We are not, no. Okay. No. Um, because the things you're doing, like you said, are very social in nature. You're not doing any kind of personal counseling. You're really just establishing and maintaining those connections with students and students with each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much. I've been feeling blah about things. This gives me a much needed oomph. Lots of great ideas to take back to my team. Great information and encouragement. Love the Google Classroom and new ideas to implement. Um, someone was asking, could they have a link to your Google Classroom page so they can check it out? I'm not sure how that works or if you're able to do that since it's got student information on it. Um, I, I mean, I have a couple of other um, counselors in the district on my page. Um, there's nothing very personal in there. And if there is, I address it and delete it off of the streams. So I don't mind um, sharing that information. If you, I mean, that's personally how I feel. So if you want to email me, I would be more than happy to share with you uh, one of my Google Classrooms so you can take a look. All right, so the person that asked that question, uh, email Nicole. Uh, can you say more about the GA drawings on YouTube, please? So um, it, they are step-by-step um, -step drawings, and they have anything from unicorns to uh, comic characters to animations. And what you do is through, you, you set up the Google Meets and you share your screen. So you both can be, um, oh, you put it in present mode, I guess it's called. And uh, you both watch the same video at the same time. Once it's completing, you both kind of just show up your drawing. So it's just another fun, engaging activity to do, to do with the kids. And all you have to do is, is put that it's G, G U U H drawings into YouTube and it'll show you all the different types of ones they have. All right, that looks like all of the comments we have. We, uh, oh, no, let's see, as a high school administrator for the school district of Palm Beach County, <laughs> I want to attest to the professionalism and expertise of these three ladies. They're exceptional and proud that they work for the school district of Palm Beach County. That's oh, from you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, well, that looks like that's the end of, uh, wait a minute, one more about parental authorization for confidentiality. Um, I think when we were talking about confidentiality, we were saying that they are doing things that are social and not personal. Are any of you providing individual counseling with parental authorization? Yes. Okay. All right. So Absolutely. the answer to that is yes. And, and a lot of times when I meet with my high school students, their families are usually right next to them. And then when I do with, when I do my talk it out this Friday, I have a little disclaimer about how confidentiality is not possible and if you need any personal or private information i can go ahead and email it to them like if they want to know a test score or gpa or you know when it's when it starts to get a little personal and you can say you know what let's set up a one on a one-on-one -on -one when it's just us and we can you know chat in private okay all right well last comment here you're an inspiration to your i'm sure you're an inspiration to your students as well as your colleagues Thank you. And ladies, thank you. thank you from the Florida School Counselor Association. We appreciate your time and expertise, and we want to thank everyone for joining us today. That concludes our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.